Hi, I'm Abigail Donnelly, and today I'm going to share with you three of my ultimate favorite Woolworths ingredients. The first one is the beautiful, creamy, ultimate mash. This has to be my favorite ingredient right now, and that is miso. And then beef. I just want to show you how incredible that fat is, a little bit of marbling, and, um, and it's on the bone, and I love to cook steak on the bone. I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ways to make a brinjal taste really fabulous, and of course that's with my miso, which I showed you just now. And I love cutting the brinjals this way because what happens is all the miso and all the lovely flavorings that you add just kind of like get soaked up because brinjal is so spongy, it soaks up every flavor, it's a little bit like tofu. And easy peasy, now we're just gonna pop them in the oven for about 30 minutes. Okay. Okay, so let's have a look at these beauties. And there you can see how they've kind of grilled beautifully and when you squeeze them, they're nice and soft, but they still have a little bit of structure. So what I'm gonna do just to bring all the flavors together is make a very simple dressing. Just two ingredients, which is this lovely tahini and a little bit of rice vinegar. So just to add a little bit of freshness, I've added tender stem broccoli and celery, especially celery leaves. And then what I've done is I've taken some pecans drizzled them with a bit of soya sauce and a little bit of brown sugar and then just roasted them until they're lovely and dark and sticky. And now we're just going to do a little dollop or two of this tahini dressing. Don't overdo it, but just make sure each little bit of brinjal has some. There we go. And last but not least is some beautiful lime. And there we go. That is my fabulous favorite miso brinjal salad. I'm going to show you how to jazz up mashed potato like you've never seen before. Well, I hope you've never seen before. And what I've done is I have slightly thawed some puff pastry and I have cut it to probably about 15 centimeters and then with a sharp knife. Start from the center but be careful don't cut right through because you just want to have slight incisions there we go, that's our top base. Just gonna bring in the, the bottom. Now all we need is our ultimate mash and then nutmeg, I love a little bit of nutmeg in mash. And then fill enough, you know, I'm always quite like over the top and I wanna kind of like fill too much. And then carefully place it on top. And then I am going to get a fork and just pinch it. You can pinch it with your fingers as well. I'm gonna give it a little bit of an egg wash. I've just taken some egg and water. So our oven's ready, 200 degrees. Middle shelf. And we'll look at it at about another 20 minutes time. Oh, look at it, mashed potato pie. So I have got a celeriac, beautiful smooth sauce to smother it with. Yum, and there is your magnificent mashed potato pie. All I need to do now is to slice it to show you how yummy it is inside. How delicious does that look? I'm going to show you a few tips on how to make the perfect steak. Well, that's how I do it. So the first thing is, whatever cut of meat it is, bring it to room temperature. But before you do that, what I like to do is smother it in a fat. So preferably beautiful free range duck fat, which is fantastic or if you want to, butter. And this just adds flavor and it also helps when you cook it to seal it and to caramelize it. And the next tip, whether you're brying or cooking on gas or whatever, you, whatever heat medium you have, is to have a cast iron pan. I really love my cast iron pans. I just feel they've got a little bit of grit and texture which kind of like helps the, the crust or the caramelization or the Maillard reaction. Oh, look at that and then just before i put it in the oven i'm just going to give that little fat a beautiful sear and just hold it there with your tongs and that looks beautiful and seared it's right the oven's going to give it a little bit more color and let's put it in the oven and i would say i love my meat medium rare i would say maybe 10 minutes at 200 degrees oh this looks good the way that I like to serve it up is to not really slice it too thinly, but it's always your, your preference. I like to have a little bit of, of bite, I call it like a bite. And you can just see it's just so 
beautifully cooked. I like it medium rare. If you fancy it a little bit more, then yeah, just cook it a little bit longer. So at this stage, I like to season it with salt and preferably salt flakes. Just adds a little bit more texture. I hope I've given you some amazing ideas using my favorite three rules ingredients and to show you how to cook with quality ingredients, restaurant style in your kitchen.